Well, petrol prices have just gone up by 5 rupees, which means everybody is thinking about diesel cars. And in specific, we have been thinking about the mid-sized diesel sedans and where the Volkswagen Vento has been sitting pretty much easy right on top. It's been our pick in that segment. Of course, now it has hot new competition by way of Hyundai's new Werner, which is packing a 1.6-litre diesel motor under that hood. Well, we've got them together here today. We're going to put them head-to-head -head and see which one comes out on top. Hyundai's forte is in styling. You could see that in the old Werner. But every once in a while, they turn up with an ace, like the all-new Werner. Its low stance, beautiful surfacing and smart detailing make it look really eye-catching. There's a strong V-shaped crease on the bonnet. The new hexagonal grille is a family trait and extends down into the bumper. The L-shaped fog lights are a nice touch and heighten its sportiness. From the side too, the Werner looks athletic. Its coupe-like roofline and the waistline streaking upwards as it goes to the rear are very dynamic. There's a nice chunky feel to the boot and the tail lights look smart as they fan outwards. Overall, it is an energetic design that's doing a lot to grab your attention. Volkswagen's Vento is a different creature. There's a very controlled, sedate and understated feel to it. It has an air of German somber solidity. However, it does reek of class. Though we have to say it isn't as exciting or as head-turning as the Werner. On the inside too, the Vento's cabin has a staid and simple layout. There are no flourishes or eye-catching bits here, except that the equipment levels may feel a bit inadequate for a car of this class, especially when stacked against the new Werner, which I was rather enjoying. So what's nice about the front seats of the Werner? Well, the seats themselves, they have a nice sculpting to them. They tend to hug your body. Apart from that, it just feels more airy and spacious as compared to the Vento. The design, it's not like the Vento at all. It's a more contemporary, more futuristic kind of styling as compared to the Ventos, which is quite simple and classy in that sense. But here, the build quality and all also feels quite good and the level of equipment is just incredible. The equipment list on the Werner would make many a car from higher segments nod in admiration. The top-of-the-line SXO variant gets a smart key with keyless go, leather upholstery, six airbags, ABS with EBD and even ESP. The lower-spec SX variant is priced along the lines of the Vento Highline. It comes packed with climate control, powered mirrors, powered folding mirrors, parking sensors plus reversing camera that's integrated into the rearview mirror which also has an auto-dimming feature. There's also a music system with USB, auxiliary and Bluetooth connectivity. This variant sports two airbags and also gets ABS. In comparison, the Vento Highline seems a bit bare. That's despite having climate control, a CD player, height adjustable driver's seat, tilt and telescopic adjust for the steering, dual airbags and ABS. In terms of build quality and materials, the Verna feels like it's a match for the Vento. Then there are some bits like the dimpled finish on the Verna's dash that really do stand out. Finally, choosing between the two is made all the more easier by the incredible level of loading on the Verna. Meanwhile, out on the road, can the Vento's 1.5-litre common rail motor take on the Werner's 1.6-litre engine? Well, on paper, the Werner has a huge advantage. It is developing 126 bhp of power and 26.5 kgm of torque. The Vento, meanwhile, is developing 105 bhp and 25.4 kgm of torque. On top of that, the Werner packs a 6-speed gearbox while the Vento uses a 5-speed unit. It really sounds like it's a no contest. 
However, when we simulated the roll-on acceleration run, the story was quite incredible. Trundling around in third gear at speeds of 30 km an hour, we just put our pedal to the metal. The Werner struggled to keep pace with the Vento. Once the Volkswagen got past 2000 rpm, it just shot ahead. Though while driving in the city, you need to get used to the sudden surge, out here on the empty roads, the Vento zoomed ahead of the Werner by 4 seconds in the run from 20 to 80 in third gear. In fourth gear, from 40 to 100, the advantage was a massive 5 seconds. The Werner counters all of this with some steady performance. Unlike the Vento, which has a surge of torque after 2000 rpm, the Werner builds steam very gradually. It starts building up right from 1500 rpm and combined with this 6-speed gearbox, you can really trundle around at low speeds in the city without getting hassled. Of course, the extra set of ratios makes it all the more better because when you want to cruise down the highway, you've got the 6th gear to slot into. When you pit the Werner and the Vento in a straight, flat-out run, it's the Hyundai that has the advantage. The Werner does the run from 0 to 100 km an hour in 10.54 seconds. That's 0.8 seconds quicker than the Vento. Also, the Werner's refinement is really very good. You can hardly hear the engine and it makes the cabin feel isolated and relaxing. In comparison, the Vento sounds a bit noisy and a bit cumbersome. So while you may need an extra gear change every now and then to make an overtaking move, the Werner ends up feeling more relaxed and tireless to drive in just about any condition. When it comes to the suspension, both cars come with McPherson struts at the front and twist beam setups at the rear. Both use electric steering systems as well. However, when driven hard, both cars feel very different. Now, neither of these are out-and-out -out driver's cars. They're more for, you know, comfortable cruising rather than being thrown around corners. The Werner is set up really quite soft. It tends to bob around and at higher speeds, it feels quite a handful. The Vento's handling in comparison is a lot more confidence-inspiring. The suspension all does seem like it's working together to keep the car nice and steady even at higher speeds. It just feels more secure in that sense and more composed. These saloons will roll around corners, but it's the Werner with the softer setup that rolls the most. Its steering too isn't enjoyable. It feels way get dead ahead and then quicken suddenly once you turn in. It is a handful at high speeds and needs a firm hand to keep it in check. The Werner softer suspension setup focuses on the back seat. Despite that, it's the Vento that impresses in the rear. For the backseat passenger, the Vento is definitely the better place to be in because first and foremost, you have more goodies. You can adjust the front seat position right by this handle here. Apart from that, you have vents for the air conditioning and it just feels better. The seat has good under thigh support. You have a nice airy feel because the window line is lower than what you have in the Werner. So it just feels more comfortable. You also feel more comfortable in the backseat of the Vento because of the way the suspension is set up. Low speed ride is one thing, but you also have to have good body control at higher speeds. The Werner tends to bob around a bit, which can be a little discomforting. The Vento in comparison just feels very composed, very calm, which just makes it all the more comfortable to be in. So the Vento feels better to drive and more comfortable to be driven in as well. Whether driving or being driven, you will be just as concerned about fuel efficiency. Hyundai's six-speed gearbox and linear power delivery help the Werner manage 13.8 km per litre in the city as compared to the Vento's 13.1. Out on the highway, the Werner's 17.9 km per litre betters the Vento's 17.3 km per litre. So, when you stack things up, which one comes out on top? So, at the end of the day, the Vento's got the better backseat, it has good ride quality and it has decent handling as well. Its engine, it has that extra little bit of punch for, you know, cruising down on the highway. Those are the strong points in the Vento's favour. The Verna counters all of that with its diesel engine, which is much more refined. And thanks to its six-speed gearbox, you can cruise down the highway. Out in the city as well, it feels quite hassle-free thanks to the power delivery, which is quite linear. When it comes to the suspension, its setup may not be as composed as the Vento's, but it's still decent to live with. 
when it comes to features, equipment and styling, there's just so much more appeal that's working in the favor of the Werner. And last of all, when you factor in the pricing, this just seems like incredible value, which makes the new Werner our diesel pick in this segment.